here it is, the quilt we've been waiting for, Roaring Twenties. Isn't it beautiful? It's so different than any other quilt you've seen. It's not just half square triangles or strips, even though those are beautiful too. This is so extremely unique and different than anything you've seen. Hi, I'm Judy Godier. I designed this quilt for Studio E Fabrics. I designed this quilt because we wanted to showcase Peppered Cory's Peppered Cottons. This is a beautiful quilt and there are so many different techniques in the quilt that are used. It was specifically designed, like I said, to showcase the shock cottons, but it was also designed so that there would be handwork in addition to machine sewing. So each of these blocks will be on a different month. So it's a block of the month program. There are five different blocks. It is a six month long block of the month program. The final month is for the binding and the backing and showing you how to put the entire quilt together. Each block has its own video tutorial. So the techniques are very thoroughly explained. For example, this block here uses some English paper piecing techniques, but not only does it use a hand process for the English paper piecing, but there is also a tutorial on how to do this using the sewing machine. So if you're like me and you're one of those people that doesn't necessarily want to use the sewing machine, or I'm sorry, do anything by hand, you can put it together with your machine. That's how thorough the tutorials are. You go to bungalowquilting.com to find these tutorials and they, they will just help you right along, right along your way. So let's go and talk to Pepper Corey. Hello, I'm Judy Godier and I am here today with Pepper Corey. Pepper has designed some incredibly beautiful fabrics that are called shot cottons for Studio E. She's been designing these fabrics for a while but now we have some new colors. Because of these wonderful new colors and how we want to introduce these, we are making a quilt. We, I made a quilt, I designed it and made it, and it's called Roaring Twenties. It's been very, very well received. It's very exciting because it doesn't look like any other quilt that's out there right now. It's completely unique. And the thing that makes it so special is these beautiful shot cottons that were created by Pepper. So what it's going to be is it's going to be a block of the month. And here are some of the beautiful blocks. Wow. And if you've never worked with shot cottons before, this is a great opportunity to stick your toes in and also learn to do some wonderful techniques um, with stitching different types of blocks with different techniques and use some of these gorgeous, gorgeous colors. This happens to be my favorite block. I just love this one. So there are, in all, there are five different blocks and we'll introduce one each month um, and they'll be kitted up by your local quilt shop and you'll be hearing about this all very, very soon. So with that, let's turn it over to Pepper. You can tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about why you love these shot cottons. Okay, uh, I'm Pepper Corey, and I'm in Beaufort, North Carolina. So Judy and I are miles and miles apart as this talk is happening. And I'm sitting in my very messy quilt studio. Uh, we're rebuilding a desk and, and shoving uh, shelves around. Uh, shot cottons, let me see. First, you have to know what a shot fabric is. A shot fabric is where all the threads are dyed before they are made into fabric. So the, the dyed threads are then warped on a loom and they become the horizontal part of the weaving. And then you choose another color of dyed threads to become the back and forth. The warp is on the loom and the weft is what is shot back and forth in what's called a flying shuttle. And it's very quick. Nowadays, uh, of course, it's run by electricity. What happens when you choose two different colors? It, it kind of depends on a few things. When you weave 
an equal intensity red and blue together. You don't always get what we would get if we were mixing paints. You know, we'd get purple, red and blue. But what we get is a, is a fabric that kind of reflects light and throws off the impression of purple. It's, it's really quite amazing. It's like a living solid color. Yes, that's now, a great there, way to put it. That's yeah, there are, um, some of the shot cottons are very easy and to understand. One of the thread colors is a deep color and the other is white. If that's the case, then it's called a chambray. And everybody knows what a chambray is. If you have ever seen or worn a blue work shirt, a blue cotton work shirt, then you have come in contact with a chambray. So that's also a shot cotton. And then there's where the colors are mixed with black. And of course that takes the intensity way down. They get very deep and rich. So a red plus a black and a blue plus a black, very interesting. You can also choose colors that are from two very, very different families. You know, like a green plus a red. Now, if you did that in paints, red and green would probably end you up with some shade of brown, but it doesn't in cottons. What's hap what happens as the threads intersect is that you actually get a deep green that throws off red. And the best thing I can liken it to is, you know, the leaves of a begonia plant and they have veins of red in them. We actually named that shade of green begonia because of that. So some unexpected things happen. And um, I give lots and lots of suggestions of what I'd like to see. And uh, the weavers experiment on very small desk looms and they weave samples first. And then they send them to the art director of Studio E Fabrics in New York. And she takes a look at what they've come up with. And we decide where does that fit uh, into the, the peppered cottons that are available right now. I had a friend in the business who always said, if you want to know what the next color is, look where the holes in the market are. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, that was his contention that if, you know, nobody was doing uh, lavender that year, if he could produce a lavender, people would have started to look for it. All right, so that's one theory. But the other thing is with the internet, especially, and so many people seeing the fabrics close up, uh, there are a lot of people that are, are working after samples right now. You know, they see a sample of something and they want that exactly. So um, you've taken a chance, Judy. You've really got out on a limb to design this quilt. Now, I love this quilt and as a quilter, I respect the piecing and the designing thought that has gone into it, you know, but color wise and design wise, it is a one of. Yeah. And uh, I would be delighted if people uh, would want to make it. It's not just the buying and the selling of the fabric. It's the fact that they'd be doing something they'd never done before. And that's exactly right. And I, I, I find that I get a little frustrated with seeing you know, new pattern, new pattern by, and it, it's all it is, is something that we've done so often in the past, just with different colors, which that's yeah. wonderful too. There's nothing wrong with that. But this, I think that this pattern is truly a new pattern. I mean, this is not yeah. something, these blocks are completely different than anything we've ever seen before. And then to use shot cottons as opposed to solids. So many people are, are quilting with solids. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Solids are dramatic and they're striking and they're beautiful. But shot cottons, they really are. They're the living solid. They're a living, breathing, dynamic yeah. piece of fabric. Yeah. Well, before there were many shot cottons around, at least here in this country, there were shot silks. And sometimes those were made into really elegant dresses, you know, that sort of shimmered two colors. Uh, there's also shot linen, which I didn't know about, but it's, very, it's been very popular in Eastern Europe, Poland and Russia for a long, long time. So these, fa these fabrics have been around and weavers have been experimenting with for hundreds, maybe thousands of years, I don't know. Shot cottons in India are woven in a very light weight. They're almost gauzy. And that's because uh, the ladies in Southern India wear saris. And if you wear a sari, which is a wrapped garment, I don't know how many meters of cloth it takes, but really quite a lot. 
the fabric has to be lightweight and gauzy so that it wraps nicely and you don't perspire all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we knew the Indian weavers knew what they were doing. I think the biggest thing was that we had to um, tell them to weave with threads that would bring the quality and the weight and the feel of the shot cottons up to the quality of other fabrics that were being sold in quilt stores. So we didn't want gauzy shot cottons. That was fine for the Indian public, but there, there were these people who knew how to do it and were not used to weaving heavily. Uh, I was told that the first time they wove an order of uh, peppered cottons in the, in the, in the uh, big, in, in the uh, heavier weight, um, they kind of looked at each other and said, these won't sell. And then wow. they sold out and the weavers went, okay. Evidently those crazy Americans and Europeans like this stuff. And uh, so we've had a very good relationship with the weavers in India um, ever since. And they've been a real hit for Studio E Fabrics and they've helped people um, in India at the same time. Yeah, the thing, you know, it brings to mind when you started talking about how they initially were gauzy and then they had to create something different. This particular yeah. um, line of shot cottons, all the colors and, and so forth that, that are available through Studio E are, the thing I really love about them, there's so many, but one of the things is I tend to be, I'm not just a quilter and a lot of women are not. Um, they're, they sew garments, they sew bags, they sew home deck. I mean, I love to do throw pillows. I love to do curtains, draperies. And, and these shot cottons really are able to cross all lines of creativity. Um, I, would be, I would be okay with making you know, shades or curtains with these and I'd be okay with doing throw pillows and I'd certainly want a shirt or a dress out of them. I mean, oh, yeah. and then they're perfect for quilting too. It's like, what's not to love about these? They're great. Oh yeah, a young uh, fashion designer contacted us early on and she had used that green I talked about, begonia. Begonia, mm -hmm. uh, I love that To one. make the most beautiful wrapped blouse that had a big bow on the side oh. and it was just magnificent. And she said, don't you make this in wider widths? And of course we didn't at the time, we didn't make the 108 inch, mm -hmm. you know, but as a garment maker, she sometimes wanted something uh, uh, wider than yeah. 45 inches. Right. So uh, I'm really pleased when people use them for things. I've made sheets out of my bed, uh, out of it for my bed mm -hmm. and pillowcases. Yeah. And now, of course, that we have the, the wider ones, it's easy to make a sheet. Right. I just, I just measured my sheet size and washed the fabric and then hemmed it. And the, the top sheet, I actually did Sashiko all along the, the oh, sheet beautiful. on top. So when it folds back over the quilt, it makes the nice presentation. That's beautiful. And I, I really wish that people would think beyond just quilting more yeah. often. I mean, I, I would love, I, I love your idea of sheets now that we've got the wider, but one of the other things that I oftentimes tell my customers when they see a piece of fabric, they like, I love this, but I don't know what to do with it. I say, so what would be wrong with making cloth napkins out of it? When you pull them out of the drawer and you see them every day, you know, you don't look at your quilt that's in the closet every single day, but when you've got cloth napkins in your drawer, you're seeing those every day and you're seeing tablecloths and you're seeing, don't be afraid to, to do a lot of home deck and tablecloths with the wider widths. Oh, mm -hmm. that would be just mm -hmm. fabulous. Especially yeah. if you have, like you said, some beautiful stitching along the outside edges and same yeah. with napkins. Uh, I have a friend who um, made a sample of cloth napkins out of shot cottons, and she used a blue-green color called uh, marine blue, and uh, she um, cut the napkins, I think one and a half inches larger than what she needed, and then she did a hemming stitch inside that, and then she pulled the threads out, Ooh. and they're so beautiful because like on the two sides of the napkin, like east-west, the blue threads are oh, there. Yes. And then at the top and the bottom, the green threads were there. Yes, so when yes. you use a shot cotton, if you're into any kind of frayed edge art, like if you were making a rag quilt, mm -hmm. yes. then you get the opportunity to see that dual nature of the fabric. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, well, it was wonderful to be able to talk to you. And um, if you have any questions, I know that I can be um, contacted through my website which is mm -hmm. bungalowquilting.com. 
And Pepper, mm -hmm. what is your website? It is peppercory.com, but I will be honest, it's best to reach out to me in private messaging on Facebook. Okay. And to put into the communication, you know, some indication of the inquiry, like about shot cottons, or I have a question or something like that. And uh, then I would be happy to get back to you right away. Wonderful. And it's the, the quilt blocks will start to be released April 15th, 2021. And we are busily cutting up kits right now. And um, I know a lot of other local quilt shops are as well. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be exciting to see all these come to life. Now you're doing YouTube videos as well. Th thank you for reminding me about that. Yes, there will be. No uh, I, I wanted to watch them when you when you start a new block. I wanted to make sure I could watch the videos. Yes. Where would I go to do that on YouTube? OK, so if you go to bungalowquilting.com, OK, you you're... can find if you go to um, news or it's tutorials, one of the two, they're not hard to find. Okay. You just scroll down through and every single one of the videos is available. So if you're, if you want to ask my, my, if you want to ask me questions, you can contact me at bungalowquilting.com or you can, you know, just like I said, go watch those videos. They are so in depth. Um, what are they named on YouTube? They are um, the um, Roaring Twenties Quilt Block 1, Roaring Twenties Quilt Block 2. Okay. Okay. And so, on and so forth. So whatever you, you know, before you embark on doing one yeah. of the blocks, watch one of the videos and um, I'm there for you for questions too. So with that, I'm going to stop recording and say goodbye to Pepper. I'm going to still be. Goodbye. Happy quilting. Questions. <laughs> okay.